Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? It must be a law firm when they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors, original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing. Just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning and you be the judge. Well, speaking of Fanny, fan, fan in the flames with I Fanny. Did not did well. I led right into it. Yes, led right ahead. into it. Uh, let me pull this up. Let's see. Let's see. Where we at? What is this? Oh, here we go. Um, I'm, I knew she was going to do this. So you see me zooming the pose, this <laughs> pose here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I put it there. Uh, all right. But I want to share this one. Um, Georgia State, Georgia Senate approves special committee to investigate Fannie Willis misconduct you, allegations. You see what this dumb buddy has done with her stupidity? Good Lord. How can you do? You're supposed to be in charge of prosecution for a major U.S. city. And you pull off a typical dumb crook move. And a bunch of them. Well, apparently, the Georgia State Committee, um, Senate Committee hearing, they're going to live stream this. And um, attorney merchant for the defense, um, she was subpoenaed, I guess, to, um, well, you, they subpoen subpoenaing you to what? To be a witness or something, I guess. So she was subpoenaed to be present at this hearing. And I think the hearing is tomorrow. So. Um, I wanted I wanted to play. May, may I make one remark here? Yeah. I can't before I forget it. There's a big dispute on whether she's lying or telling the truth. The problem is, is if she was telling the truth, it makes it worse. If she was lying, it's a case of she and Mr. Wade should have disclosed to the court as an officer, as officers of the court, that they were romantically involved, which would set up a conflict. The judge would make the decision as to whether they stayed on the case or they had to go. They should have brought that up if they had had a pre-existing relationship. Right. If the relationship developed after he was appointed, can I break it down? Are we doing where we got to be polite or can we be crude about it? Uh. Well, you can edit it. I'll give you the impolite version. If this <laughs> relationship, if this relationship developed after the appointment, ethically, he should have kept his dick out that pussy, and that pussy should have kept her legs closed as officers of the court. They owed it to the people. In other words, you wait till this is all over before you give it up or you get it. So that actually makes it worse. When they had done it, they were supposed to go through the personal embarrassment and reveal this to the judge in confidence to give him the decision as to whether they stayed on it. They didn't. That's the second thing wrong. Third thing wrong, they continued to conceal it. Fourth thing wrong, there were actually some consequences that had a bearing, material bearing on the outcome of this case. Not her, not him but on Donald Trump et al. and multiple co-defendants. So you have, if you are telling the truth about it, made it worse because you compounded. One, you didn't keep legs closed or didn't keep it in your pants. Two, you didn't report it. Three, you concealed it. And you four, you had results that came out of it that impacted the case where other people are concerned. And then there's this thing that gets revealed about all the rest of it. So dumb bunny didn't even get that. So like your chief prosecutor, what does this say about your competence to hold the office? This is 
So I want to play this um, video clip. Yeah. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis will face a second hearing from the state Senate. A committee is investigating misconduct allegations against the DA. And we are told defense attorney Ashley Merchant has been subpoenaed to appear before this committee. Merchant represents one of former President Donald Trump's co-defendants in the Georgia election interference case. That hearing is set for tomorrow at 9 a.m. So that should be interesting. It, all you had to do was just deal with ethics. It ain't right. Keep your stuff in your pants and keep your legs closed. Assuming she's telling the truth about when it developed. The fact that there are witnesses, one person is going to come in and testify that the lawyer was lying to the court who said he didn't recall and all this other stuff, which still he's technically protected, but he might run into an ethics problem. Wade is going to run into an ethics problem too. So you have three lawyers who ought to know better, who have put themselves in a trick bag because Miss Fanny had to have live-in boyfriend, the DJ, and slip around with Mr. Wade, who was still in the divorce by a smart ex-wife who had been filed against, who was going to try to get whatever in the hell she could get out of it. And who, by the way, is going to be pursuing a big chunk of the $700,000 almost that he's got. Now, to put in perspective what's wrong with that $700,000, the Attorney General of the United States of America for handling all of the business of the United States government makes approximately one half of that per year. So this guy hasn't even filed anything, really. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been set for trial, meaning the case against Trump at all, 17, 16, 17, or how many co-defendants. It is a problem. Two of the co-defendants who are attorneys have pled guilty for what, in, in their instances, is obvious misconduct, where they attempted to interject themselves by setting up a false independent thing and she's trying to allege that everybody is in conspiracy, which under the facts she alleges in our 92-page indictment, it doesn't match up. So you can exclude them. And she was trying to grandstand. He was trying to grandstand. So instead of not opposing severance, so you broke it down in multiple trials, they wanted to make a real last circus so the Baba Yaga, the boogeyman, couldn't run for president without being distracted by this. So they chose this. They made the wrong chess move, and somebody's got them in check right now, and they ain't anywhere they can move without a mate coming up. Checkmate. All right, so... <clears throat> Sorry. Real dumb bunny stuff. Real like, dumb bunny stuff. Um, two things here. Should should I ask you to break down the closing remarks on Thursday, or did you want to give your summation of the closing remarks that took place on Friday? Because I, I, it's another angle I want to put bring into play here. It will go ahead. Put your thing into play. I'll be okay. glad. So um, let me share this. Because during closing remarks, Fannie Willis, this is an attorney for the defense, um, they are bringing up the fact that she used race and was pandering in the black church. So I want to just play this real quick. Oh, where is it? Oh, here we go. In discussions with the Lord, God, is that uh, is it that some uh, that some will never see a black man as qualified? no matter his achievements. Again, the deflection. What is what is she saying? The listener is not necessarily in that audience in that church. The listener is in at Fulton County. The potential jurors who will come into a courtroom and say whether or not they can fairly judge the evidence or judge the, uh, the, the defense in this case. She chose to inject race into the minds of the listeners and virtually everybody in this community and literally everybody in this country has reviewed and, uh, and analyzed her speech that she made in a premeditated way. And in, in bringing in not only the race card, but also in, 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 in bringing in the, the religious matter, this is exactly what Hammonds v. State 
and our Supreme Court talks about uh, condemning is going to say in her in discussion. Okay, so that was the end of that. And this is okay. Now let me say this: the mm -hmm. first thing he brings up, he doesn't put it in a category, but it's a Batson matter. In other words, you indicate that somebody's trying to set up a Batson situation without having to board out of the jury. They're using public media. What's Batson? Interjecting race in terms of tainting the jury or selecting the jury. I got is one of the grounds that the Arkansas Supreme Court unanimously agreed should be sufficient to set aside the conviction for a triple homicide committed by an alleged 13-year-old child uh, who was the youngest person in the world on a death row at that time. I got a stay of execution from the Arkansas Supreme Court and from then Governor Bill Clinton 23 minutes before they were going to execute him. So that kind of Batson issue can even re overturn a murder trial. So in this case, she's interjecting race and religion into the whole process in a fashion which is extrajudicial, which is no, no, no in terms of ethics in order to taint the jury pool. So in other words, what's happening is it's reverse discrimination She's setting it up so nobody white can get a fair trial in front of a jury. By the way, she is talking in front of this church audience where she's going, poor girl, why are they picking on? I'm poor black girl, why are they picking on me? Mm -hmm. And she's doing a classic thing that the Supreme Court has jumped on racist white prosecutors in the past for attempting to inflame a jury pool into a racist outlook on something based on the fact that the defendants were black. In this case, because the defendants are white, she's trying to inflame the jury. What's good for the goose is reverse, good for the cat. Reverse racism. Yeah, reverse racism. Classic dumb bunny move. And by the way, all of these multi-state, international, multi national corporations move to Atlanta because it's so rainbow friendly and all that. And I assure you, they're not all black managed. So what's supposed to happen when they say the chief law enforcement officer for this county is being such a racist? Now, I know all some of the woke for well, she got it right now. That ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about law because the bottom line is you know, stuff can flip once you get a precedent set. And this woman is going out trying to inflame potential jurors in Atlanta where the jury is likely or was likely to be selected such that you can't get a fair trial because they will be inflamed to be against a finding a white scapegoat to go after. By the way, this would set up a change of venue, which would take the whole thing out of Fulton County, put it in a backwoods place somewhere in Georgia, no telling where. And also outside of one or two or three counties. Change of venue for who? For Trump or Fannie? Trump. Fannie's okay. not on trial yet. Right. Okay. It's likely that she will be because she's testifying to various and sundry criminal violations and she incriminated a dumbass. Now, also, she certainly did some stuff that's going to get IRS looking at her for tax evasion. And remember, Wesley Snipes. Now, I testified as a witness in the proceedings on his behalf. He did not get charged with tax evasion. He got charged for failure to file a complete set of returns, and he wound up with three years in the federal penitentiary. IRS testified he overpaid his taxes by a quarter of a million dollars, and they had a check for that amount to give to him in court. The judge took note of it. Now, this woman has not overpaid her taxes. She has not reported them, and she attempted to conceal them until she got cute, and it came out on cross-examination because she took the stand when she didn't have to. That would be the IRS investigating those three things. Yeah. I want to play this clip here of her. And this is the second time she was at a church. Um, you know, the first time she went to the black church was in January when the 
charges first came down on them. And then now this is the second time uh, she she goes to a black and church. And by the way, after that, when it first came down, you a smart DA, you go see the judge and you explain what it is. It's in camera, in confidence. And all he does is issue an order based on things uh, that the order, the court is ordered concealed. People might construe that as something condemning against Trump and the bunch mm -hmm. uh, that is not appropriate or something that came into play. Nobody, no, it can be any damn thing. Right. Um, and, and that would have been the end of it. But they had to hang on to this cash cow where she was the authority as to whether his excessive claim for compensation would be granted or denied. Um, and by and the way, that's a criminal act under Georgia law too. When you have this conflict dis undisclosed and it's up to you to allocate the expenditure of Georgia and Fulton County funds. So she's okaying the expenditure of Georgia funds without any critique, without any disclaimer, without failing to okay any of them with no question with somebody she was sleeping with. Right. Um, and by the way, this in the background here, I'm, I'm taking your line, by the way, this is Andrew. What's his name? Young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is him here, but I want to just play a little bit of this clip. It's two minutes. I'm, I don't need to play the first thing I want to do is tell you that I can actually feel your prayers. What folks don't understand, though, is that the attacks that are coming, they are doing nothing but fortifying and making me stronger. That, that the, uh, the people that I now have praying for me are not one or two, but multitudes. And what my Lord says is if just one or two touch and agree, I have millions touching and agreeing for my protection. And so I thank you for touching, for agreeing, for covering me, for your prayers. Um, they are all so very appreciated. Um, and many of y'all understand the attacks aren't simply on me. But what the attacks really are on is a way of life and people really being offended at this notion that everyone should be treated equal under the law. And as long as God has me standing here, everyone shall be treated equally under the law. So I only have one ask today, that you continue to pray, that you continue to cover me, and all these weapons that are forming, they just gonna fall away. Thank you. At some point, this person who is acting as an officer of the court in question should have formed the reasonable opinion that she had no business doing this. She is calling into a question the integrity of the process. This is not the person doing the accusation against people who are presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. This is the accuser. This is the one that's bringing the charges that have a burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, this is inappropriate to make this kind of appeal. This is supposed to be someone who is properly independent. That's not what we're getting here. And this is another grounds for her removal. How many people have listened to this who live in the Atlanta area? What kind of effort is this where she is identifying what she is doing with a holy crusade under God to take on the oppressors? Who is she calling to be these evil people? Nobody in the mainstream media is attacking her. It's just the defendant saying, hey, we're not getting a square, fair, uh, unbiased, 
situation here. There is a conflict of interest because this person has indicated that she has presumed to have a personal interest in the outcome of the matter. This is somebody that's now said, I'm personally under attack. Somebody's threatening my life. Who? She's not had anybody come up and do this. What a problem is, and we're going to do a, a study on this, is in North Fulton, which is the municipality after which Fulton County is named, has been having some problems with her during her tenure as chief prosecutor or prosecutorial authority in terms of bribery, extortion, and some other things. And if anybody's making a threat, it flows from that which, by the way, becomes a suggested source of where the cash came from that she's supposed to be too broke to have outside of the cookie jar full of cash that her father, Mr. Floyd, Attorney Floyd, was confusing with black particular thing. It's a woman thing. You know, it's called money in the cookie jar for a rainy day. It's a woman's back money which ain't got nothing to do with black or white. Now, um, this being the case, remember there's an $8,400 lien against her home by IRS that she has gotten a stay on. I about that. Or a you want you want to you want to tell me how I should pay my bills? Yeah, and then eighty four hundred dollar lien against her home from IRS. Now, interestingly enough. She got reimbursed by her campaign for $8,400, which is the amount she owes IRS to get the lien off her property. I find that interesting. She, she opened the door for a specific ethics complaint, which also could lead to a criminal indictment against her under Georgia law. She says she took close to $50,000 out of her 401k. That became taxable income as far as IRS is concerned. She didn't report that. Now, she only reported donating 19000 to the campaign. That leaves another $31,000 that was unreported. They reimbursed her for $8,400, which, by the way, neither contribution is tax deductible but she didn't report that. So now IRS considers the $8,400 as extra income on top of the close to 50 grand. She did not report as non-taxed income. So she's in a damn mess. And this is just ignorance of the law and foolishness. So we have dumb crook. They know black girl magic. For goodness sakes, this is an insult to you and every other good black woman I know. They well, I don't have this ignorant. I think it's an insult to black people because, you know, it's, it seems like we always want to run to the black church. You always want to, you know, um, scream out race. And it's the insult is you sitting at one of the highest level of in the justice system as an officer of the justice system and you're using race to whereas justice is blind to whereas the purpose of you being a black person a black woman is to make sure that you are um using and issuing ju um, justice um equally to whereas in the past it was not so it's not about you should be you, you should be overlooked with your impropriety because you're a black woman. You should not be using race. You should not be using your gender. And because it's it's not about that. And and that's what I'm tired of. I'm tired of just because you see a, a person in black skin, that means that they are only supposed to uphold the law for us. To whereas the purpose of you being in that seat is to make sure that the law is being executed justly. Because and, for so many decades and centuries, it was not. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I get exactly what you're saying. It's and not a that, black thing. It's and by the way, why is she trying to make it a black thing like she's getting persecuted? The defendants are trying to say, hey, 
Look what's happening to us because she's not obeying the law. Now, you are in charge of the prosecution. You are in charge of the prosecutions with an S, plural, in this county, and your ass is black. Where are you being subjected to racial persecution? You have well, been charged with white crap. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, and then and you try to bring in race to explain and cover what you're doing to persecute somebody. It's like, wait a minute, what time is it? We hate Trump. He's a boogeyman. Well, what about all the other black men who are accused of murder, robbery, that R word thing, uh, burglary, you know, garrison sundry con games and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, you know, all of the black folk that are getting charged by you, that all of the black folk are saying they don't get justice because justice is just us. Well, guess what? They elected your ass to do something about it. So what are you doing, y'all? They're picking on me because I'm black. How the hell is anybody going to pick on you? You're in charge of that. You're the boss. <laughs> You're the boss. But you got caught. Um, and, and then if you look at her track record, right, when one of her first major cases was the teacher scandal down in Atlanta. And she sent all of them to prison except for one. She gave them a lot of years. And they were black. So... You know, so if you want to bring race into it, let's bring race into it. Why did you send all those black educators to prison for 10 years, 15 years, seven years? Why did you And you, you do the same damn thing now out at your own mouth that they are accused of. Basically right. conducting improprieties and taking advantage of their official positions. You just did it. And we didn't hear an accusation. We heard it out of your own mouth. Exactly. You have a right to be silent, remain silent. Anything you can say can and will be used in evidence against you. So all in all, with the Fanny, um, with the, with the Fanny, Fanny up in flames, right? Fan in the flames. Uh, the judge is going to pass his judgment in a couple of weeks, probably next week sometime. Um, or maybe the week after. Well, that. not his judgment. He's just going to rule oh. on whether the motion oh. to exclude the Fulton County DA's office and the special prosecutor attorney Wade are well taken. Now, she's going to have to probably stand trial as a result of this. So we're going to see the spectacle of the former district attorney of Atlanta, Georgia, go on trial. We already have seen the spectacle of the former chief of police in Atlanta get demoted, fired, reinstated, and then resigning at a lesser rank for being accused of being involved in the child pornography ring, the manufacturing and uh, distribution of child pornography for which some people are doing 10 years, some are doing 25 years in the penitentiary, getting hired in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, being under investigation for the same things, and while under investigation, being hired by the city of Memphis to be the chief of police here by a corrupt former mayor. And I know all about that crap. So well, I, I want to let's go in Atlanta. This is my question. Then. And for Atlanta, you know, do you think that this is really uncovering black, white? It don't matter your background, your race. Do you think this is uncovering, uncovering a lot of corruption that has been going on in Atlanta, Fulton County, maybe even the state of Georgia? How many mayors in Atlanta's recent history have done time or been under investigation for this kind of wrongdoing? I'm going to bring people on this show so we can talk about what's happening in the city of Fulton. I've been looking at what they have. It does not look pretty. And Miss Fanny has been apparently, from what I've been looking at, protecting it and been part of it. So what have we got down here? You've got somebody that lives in a glass house and they've been throwing a lot of stones. You don't do that. This woman should have stayed as far away from this as she could have. And like I said, I read her 92-page indictment for RICO. 
in my opinion, is a 50-year experienced individual involved in criminal justice, went to a better law school than she did, and probably did better grade-wise than she did, and has a much more extensive career in the subject of criminal law than she has, I'd say there is a damn good case against her for a number of criminal offenses and criminal wrongdoing. And, you know, I, I'm just astonished and somewhat embarrassed that, first off, this is a member of the bar that pulled off this kind of stupid stunt. This was a person that was involved in the sacrosanct interaction between the government and citizens that is inherent in the process of criminal law. And thirdly, down on the scale that she was black. And I also feel a remote embarrassment for my good sisters who are fine lawyers and judges who I'm sure are intensely embarrassed by this kind of conduct that she's trying to make. It's a sister girl thing. And she, in this speech said, she's entitled to some slack because she's a black woman under a lot of stress and she should be excused. We didn't even get into that, but does she say that about the defendant she prosecutes? And by the way, why did she choose to tie up her office with all of this outside work on Donald Trump, a national issue and 16 and 17 co-defendants when they have all this crime that's unaddressed in Atlanta. Why is this court tied up with this complicated mess when it ought to be devoting its time to handling the problems of the people who live there? Why did she choose to interject herself in this process? It's a national thing. It's up to the people of the United States of America. There's only a remote attachment between Trump's activities as president and what happens here. And there's a strong argument that the United States Supreme Court is going to take up about whether he in fact had immunity because of his office for this. And essentially to categorize everything that she accuses him of doing and his colleagues, except a couple of them that shouldn't even been associated with this, is that he was using his position as president of the United States to demand that there be a rigorous and vigorous investigation into whether the election proceeds proceedings were correct. Now, is there any factual basis for that? Yes, it is. First week in January, when the U.S. just second week, I think it was, U.S. Department of Justice issued an opinion in that week that there was no irregularity on a significant basis in the electoral process for November 2020. They issued two days after that a finding that in Shelby County, Memphis, Tennessee, as has been the case for the last 20 years, the corrupted nature of the hacked voting machines in Shelby County prevented a fair election. Now, this is one of the largest cities in America, Memphis, Tennessee, and you're saying that the election was hacked, it was not fair, there are a lot of discrepancies in what happened, and then you two days before said nothing's going on. So as head of the Justice Department, which is a part of a cabinet scheme under the president of the United States run by a constitutional cabinet officer, the attorney general of the United States, there is a finding by that department that in at least one large American city of some significance to the outcome of things, there is massive widespread voter corruption that existed during this election. So as president, and knowledgeable of such things, he should have been vigorous and vigilant in insisting that the utmost effort be made to ascertain whether or not there is an irregularity. And one of the things she cites, he said, find me some votes. Well, let's see. 
What do we have on that? Is that imprecise use of language the same one? Remember, I get to select my own pronouns and forget he, she, and it. I get to call all kinds of things the plural form rather than the singular, the masculine instead of the feminine or the feminine instead of the masculine. You know, you want to push irregularity and lack of precision in language use, but you want to hold somebody else to the higher standard because he said, find me some votes, which is supposed to indicate felonious intent.